Welcome back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about all things board game related. Today we have a very special review of one of the newest, certainly one of the newest, of, from Michael Kiesling. This one is Riverboat. This came back from Essen just recently, and it is a tile placement game uh, for the most part, but it's got a really interesting turn order structure for sure. So this is a two to four player game, it takes about 90 minutes to play through, and Michael Kiesling has been on an absolute roll in 2017. He came out recently with Heaven and Ale, which is a game that we yeah. both absolutely loved, and then Azul, which is one of your favorite games this year. For sure, for sure. This guy's knocking it out of the park this year. So let's talk about all these components first, and then we'll get into the gameplay. Uh, to start, each player is gonna take one of these uh, player boards and place them in front of them. The player boards are different than the way that they are set up. But when you look at them, they have five distinct territories on them. These are denoted by very specific colors. These are where you're going to be placing your workers and tending to crops, which are tiles within the game. On the left-hand corner of the board, you have the end of the game scoring. It's going to tell you all the different ways that you can score points at the end of the game. And then around the board, you have your harbor master and then a dock in which you're trying to move that harbor master up to its highest available value. Yeah, the dock is where you're going to be putting your river boats eventually, which is where the game gets its name. The other thing that's interesting that I want to comment on, the player board, this end of game scoring, I think it's a great thing and it's in Azul too. And I think it's something that people should embrace because it's always nice when you lay that down. I'm one of those guys who always forgets to go over the scoring so yeah. people can see it right away. So. I love end of the game scoring period anyway, just for as a sure. mechanic because it leaves that unknown value at the end on you don't know who exactly is going to win. Exactly. So uh, moving more into the components, you have the crop board. This is going to house the scoring track around the outside of it. And then you have three different types of crop tiles. They come in values of one, two tiles, and then three tiles. And they some of these will score you victory points the moment that you place them on your board. The two tiles will score you one victory point, and then the mass of three tiles will score you two victory points when placed upon your board. Right, and then finally, you're gonna come up here to New Orleans. This is what the game's all about. You're on the northern Mississippi. You're eventually shipping your goods down to New Orleans. This is where you're gonna get your river boats. This is also going to, you'll see these little workers. Everyone starts with 13, but there's a chance to get one more of each of those, which is very important because you definitely want your workers in this game. At the very bottom, I'll skip down here, are the opportunity cards. These will come in at a certain phase, give you some opportunity for scoring. And then lastly, there's these empty spaces, one for each player. You're going to be potentially sending your workers to New Orleans as agents. They're, they're gonna score you points throughout the game and that's another opportunity for end of game scoring. The interesting portion about Orleans though is that once you place your workers in these locations, they are permanently out of the game yeah. for you, meaning that you have less workers to utilize on your player board. Uh, you also have surveyors. Surveyors are what's gonna score you points. Each player is gonna start with two of these green surveyors. You have money. Money again is just worth flat out victory points at the end of the game, but they can also be used to manipulate some of the actions in the game to your benefit. You also have wells and you have barns. These are gonna be placed onto your player board that also give you the opportunity to score points throughout the game. Right. So to start the game, it works in a draft type fashion. Yeah, every, every stage of this game has sort of a new sort of draft, starting with how you choose the phases of the game. There are five phases of the game and the first draft that's gonna happen is every player, starting with the start player token, is going to take one of the phase tiles from the table. There's one through five. These are basically the stages of the game that you're going to go through. So if Jeremy started, he's gonna take one of the tiles. And we have a four player game set up here. This player would take another, this player would take another, I would take the fourth, and then there's a fifth tile. It's Jeremy's turn again, so he gets a second tile. So in a four player game, the first player token is gonna to get two of the five tiles. And of course, in a three player game, two people will have two tiles and one guy will have one. What's, so yeah. it, it, it kind of changes things up. This has an interesting dynamic here at play because you're gonna get a bonus from those things, but also the first player token goes out the window once you start the phases and whoever took the tile is going to be the first player for that phase. And don't worry, if you aren't the first player, you will get the opportunity to be the first player. It doesn't matter what position you are unless you're in a three player game. Each player is going to have the opportunity to take multiple tiles. Right. It just depends on your turn order to do that. So once you take your actual tiles and you draft those, as David said, then you're going to enact the tiles depending upon the number in the upper left hand corner. Remember, there's five different phase tiles, so you're gonna enact phase one first. Yeah, so starting with phase one, whoever took that tile, 
First thing they do, you look up in the upper left-hand corner of the tile, and that's the bonus for that round. And on the cultivation phase, which is phase one, that person's going to get one of those workers from New Orleans and bring them and immediately place them on their farm anywhere on the farm they want, which is huge because that's where you're going to be able to eventually plant. Next, you're going to go to the main meat of that phase. That player is going to, one by one, flip over cultivation cards that will dictate the different types of land in which you can place your workers. Everybody at the table needs to place a worker for every single card as long as they have workers to place. The cool thing about this and what you'll find with all of the phases is you can always spend one coin in each phase to do something unique. And in the cultivation phase, you can spend a coin to disregard the cultivation card and place your worker anywhere on your board. Because you're basically what you're trying to do here, and what you'll find out as we describe the game, you're gonna to wanna to clump your workers together as best as possible to get large masses so that you can plant the same types of fields and things like that. But you're gonna continue doing this until all eight cards have been flipped over and people have placed all the workers they can during that phase. Now again, we didn't wanna gloss over the fact that when you take one of these phase tiles, you get a bonus for taking that. You yes. mentioned that, but we wanna make that very apparent to you guys. The other very important portion of this is that everybody participates in the phase, yeah. no matter which tile that you take. You just get to do it first. So there is the whole crux of the game, picking the right tile at the right time to be able to take those actions before other players because it will give you very distinct bonuses. The second phase is taking as a, uh, what, what, do you remember what this one's called? It's planting. Planting. So this is a cool portion of the game. Starting with me, the first thing that happens is I get the bonus of taking a free coin. Only I get to do that because I took the phase two tile. The second thing that happens is in turn order, starting with me, each player around the table is going to be able to take one of these tiles from the crop board and then place it onto their board. They can take any tile they want with some exceptions. Number one, they have to look at their board and look where their workers have been placed from the cultivation phase. Then they're allowed to take any of the tiles they wish by lifting up their workers and placing that tile underneath of them. But they have to make sense. So I can only take this three tile if I have three clumped workers together. Right. Because they have to be sitting on each of these areas. So that's why you want to clump workers together because you can place some of these larger tiles and then immediately get victory points. As we said, the two tiles are worth one, and the three tiles are worth two victory points. So you would get those victory points on the scoring track immediately. Yeah, and the cool thing here is too, if you haven't figured this out, that bonus is nice. So if you take the tile and get that bonus, that's fantastic. But the better thing is, like we said at the beginning, almost every phase of this is a draft. Yeah. So taking that tile puts you in the first position to choose whatever land you want during the planning phase. Just like the cultivation phase gives me that bonus, and then you'll see in some other rounds, you're going to have the first opportunity to take what's up for grabs. Now, it's there is no rule pertaining on where you need to place this underneath the workers. They can cross division lines. So as we said, there's five different colors on here. You see that this is covering one color, but if I had another clump over here, I could have placed them over the white and the yellow. Right. That's perfectly legal as well. And again, this round is gonna uh, continue going each player taking a tile until all the workers on their player board have something underneath of them. Right. Phase three. Phase three is where the river boats come into play. So the person who took this tile is first going to take the bonus, and this allows you to move your harbor master up one space. I'll get back to the harbor master in just a second. The next thing you're going to do, starting with this player and in turn order, is you're going to go to the river boats, and you can buy one river boat. And then you can ultimately buy up to two during that round, but you have to buy them one at a time. To buy a riverboat, you're not usually, you're not really spending the money to do this. You're taking the workers off of the crops in order to get the riverboat. So you can see the riverboats up here are ascending order one, two, three, up to seven. There's a couple twos and a couple threes. So if I had some crops of one type with workers on them equaling three, I could take those three workers, say, from a cornfield take them over to the side of my board, and then take one of the three river boats. As soon as you take a river boat, you're going to put it in your leftmost space here across the top of your board. Now I'll get back to the harbor master. These are going to give you immediate benefits no matter what. But at the end of the game, you're going to score points for all your river boats only up to where you've gotten your harbor master. So moving that harbor master up becomes very important because you're only going to score points up to the harbor master. Yeah. One of the very important portions about this is that when he takes one of these tiles, he takes it from the bottom stack. So he would deplete that stack, meaning that 
future players may not have the opportunity of taking the one tile that they wanted for their riverboat. However, as we said previously, there's always bonuses for each of these rounds by using coins. In this round, you can spin a coin to take a tile that's missing from the stack if it's available. These tiles are limited in, in number, so some of them will go very fast, especially the ones that move your Harbor Master uh, a vast amount of space. Absolutely. And you know, that's a, it's a great point. It's an easy thing to forget those coins that you can spend each phase. And in fact, we forgot to mention yeah, it in the absolutely. last phase. During the planting phase, when you're taking crops, you can spend a coin to, instead of taking a crop from the board, if there's nothing out there that you want, you can take your chances with one of the face down crops that yeah. are on the tile stacks. Now that is a bit risky because you may not get what you want and then you're out of coin. But it's important to remember that every phase has an opportunity to spend a coin to sort of break the rules a little bit. Speaking of opportunity, phase four is the opportunity phase to take a bonus card. Now, since I'm the player that picked this tile, I would get one victory point as the bonus. And then in turn order, once again, starting with me, I'd get to pick one of these four cards off the Orleans board. The card itself, we'll get into that in a moment, but depending upon which of these positions that you take it from, will give you very specific bonuses. So you have to pay attention to that too. But the card that you take is a scoring card. You don't score it right now. It simply goes into your supply and gives you the opportunity of scoring whatever it says on there in a future round or even at the end of this round. Exactly. That, those, those cards can be great for scoring immediately, but more often than not, you're going to see one that you might want to eventually score for. Just let it sit for yeah. a while until you can really maximize the points on it. And you can spend a coin here as well. If there's nothing that you like here, you can spend a coin to look through the entire opportunity deck and then pick a very specific card, maybe a particular type of crop that you're growing. But the trick here is when you spend that dollar, you're losing a victory point and you don't get the bonus of taking one of the cards on the board. Exactly. And that's a good trade-off because looking through that deck is huge. Yeah. If you were just drawing off the top, that would be one thing. But being able to look through that opportunity card deck and pick whichever one you want is significant. Round five. This is the scoring round. So. Yeah, round five is interesting, and this will make the surveyors make a lot more sense to you. So in the scoring round, whoever takes this tile, the first thing they're going to do is they can take either a coin, they can move their harbor master up, or they're able to um, score their agents in New Orleans, which we haven't talked about, but we will right now. Mm -hmm. In the scoring phase, you're going to be able to take up to two of your surveyors and score on one of a few different things. One of those are the opportunity cards Jeremy just talked about. Those can score, be scored once and only once during the game. So you just place your surveyor on that card, take a look at how many points it scores you and score those points. Another place you can score are on the uh, wells and the barns that Jeremy mentioned at the beginning of the review. The wells are going to be placed, both of those are going to be placed on your player board. The wells are going to be scored for sort of a continuous area of one type of crop. So if you've got one big crop going and you've placed a well on it, you'll be able to score that well for all of those tiles that are connected to it. Right. The barns, on the other hand, they're not actually placed on a crop tile. They're placed on an empty tile in your fields, and they're going to be able to score for the most of any one type of crop around it. Two points for each one, in fact. Yeah, it, they're not insignificant. They're a little no. interesting scoring. The scoring in this game is very interesting because you're not scoring everything you can possibly score. Yeah. You might end up missing out on something you were trying to score. You've got just these two little guys yeah. each, each time to score up until the last round where you can actually use three surveyors in the final round of the game. Uh, one of the things I want to mention too is during phase three, when you take the river boats at any time, remember when you're taking these river boats, you're removing them from your board. So there's going to be a point in the game where you have nine of one particular type of crop. And that could be wheat or corn or whatever it may be. When you hit that threshold once during the game, you're allowed to take one of those uh, property tiles. Right. You can take the well, or you can take the barn, or you can take another surveyor. So that's one of the ways to get these and place them onto your board. Yeah, one thing we also haven't talked about, and this is because it's not really innately built into any of the phases, but there's a lot of powers that get activated, both on the river boats and in some other aspects of the game. They're going to allow you to send workers to New Orleans to be agents. When you do that, like Jeremy said earlier, you're gonna lose that as a worker. So you're gonna have fewer workers to put on your fields, but they're gonna be an agent in New Orleans. And the other thing during the scoring phase is you're going to look at all the agents you have. You're gonna score a point for every agent you have in New Orleans. So if you can get them there early, yeah. that's gonna be one or, one or more points every round for all four rounds. The other one you're gonna score are the surveyors that you've used. So what you'll find in this game is in the first round, you no one might score anything. You might not use your surveyors because you might want to hold them back. But if you have scored 
any surveyor that you've used to score throughout the game is going to score you another point at that point. Yep. So you're going to play four rounds of this, and at the end of the game, you're going to tally up all of your points. Points are awarded by whatever you've accomplished on the scoring track, added to areas that you've covered on your board. You're going to get seven points for every one of these five different color-coded areas that you've completely covered with barns or crop tiles. And that is a tricky thing. Yep. You're going to get one point for every single one of the coins that you've collected. And then any of the uh, property tiles like your surveyors or your barns or your wells that you haven't activated but you've acquired through the course of the game that you haven't scored for, you're going to get two victory points for. That's the game. Yeah, and it's a Euro through and through. Yeah. And I have to say, it didn't really even occur to me until we were just about to film this review how much drafting there is in this game. Yeah. And we can get into the re review right now. And that's one of the cool things I think that this game has going on for it is you draft those tiles from the very beginning. And then basically, not every single phase, but a lot of the phases require drafting. You're drafting the crops. You're drafting the opportunity cards. Mm -hmm. So player order, which bounce, bounces around everywhere in this game, yeah. is very, very important. Because you want to take a look. Okay, do I want specific crops? Maybe I want to take that tile. Or do I want to take a specific opportunity card? Maybe I want to take that tile. So you really need to take a survey, no pun intended, yeah. the entire table before you start and I, each round. I think round. that's less evident to new players in the game. Most of these people, we're yeah. drafting it to get the bonus yeah. of the exactly. tile and not so much because it places them in first in the turn order. But you realize that there may be a continuous type of crop that you're wanting to get. And you may see a two corn tile out there or something with two corn and radishes and you have radishes and corn on your board. So being in that turn order is hyper important. But also placing guys in Orleans it's, it's a tough decision to be able to do that. You want to get them in there early because that can give you victory points. One of the things we forgot to mention that at the end of the game, the person that has the most in there is going to score victory points yeah. as well. That's huge. The person with the most people in there is going to score 20 victory points. Second place, 10. So that's a 10-point swing as well. Yeah, the other scoring thing <laughs> that we actually failed to mention is the Harbor Master. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. This guy is going to score... So all of those numbers at the bottom of the river boats are then going to be scored, but it's kind of interesting how this goes. Yeah. First of all, your harbor master has to be a certain distance. So if you've got river boats past your harbor master, those aren't scoring at all for, for you. For anybody. For anybody. But in addition to that, only the person who has their harbor master the furthest is going to score 100% of the points on those river boats. River boats. Everyone else behind that only gets 50% of those points on the riverboats, which is significant, because if you've invested in a lot of high-value riverboats, yeah. but you're not furthest along, you're going to have all those values for your score. So as that. you can see from us even forgetting that, there's a lot of different things, moving pieces yeah. in this game that you have to consider. How you build out your tiles, how to use your workers, how to use your surveyors, how to even get surveyors to score the things that you've, ac that you've acquired through the course of the game. The components. Yeah, let's talk are about fantastic. the components. These are these are great Euro components, just like you'd expect from any sort of Mayfair game. Uh, it, I, I can't really complain about anything. There's a lot of really good tiles. They've got some nice die-cut boards here for the agents, which yeah. I think is really cool. Even the wells, although they do kind of look like life preservers a little bit, yeah. you know, they're die-cut even with the hole in them. So it's they, they really didn't skimp on the components at all. Right. So one of the things I did want to mention about the game is that there is a small amount of luck that can be in the game depending upon what is on the crop board and what kind of cultivus will come up. So if you get a wider spread of your cultivus, you may not be able to connect very specific crop types together or be able to build in a very uh, succinct faction, uh, fashion in the yeah, game. Yeah, you're, you're, you're going to have to spend some coins yes. in order to really manage this your player board for yes. sure. Which is part of the game. Yeah. I mean, it just depends on where and when you want to spend your coins. As you flip these uh, cultivation cards over, if it's a territory that you're not really including in what you're trying to do, you may want to spend a coin there. But then you're going to find yourself out of coins. It's really interesting the dynamics exist here because once you run low on coins, that's another thing that you're going to consider when you're choosing your tiles because one yeah. of them has a coin to take. Yeah, but that could also mean that one game you're scoring above 150 points and another game you're scoring below 100 points because of the way that these are placed or the way that they're drawn out. Having said that, there's a lot of different moving parts in this. If you're a Euro fan, if you like a lot of different things going on, this is definitely a game that you should take a look at. For sure, for sure. This is another Kiesling game that I really enjoyed this year. Um, maybe not as much as the other ones. I mean, it's got 
He's, uh, he's doing bar well. for Azul. So Heaven and yeah. Ale and Azul yeah. are, are out with his name on it too. But this is a game that I'll definitely be playing again. So that is Riverboat. If you guys have any questions about the game, make them in the comments below. Subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. Happy holidays to you guys, and we will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye. Season 2 of Man vs. Meeple is sponsored in part by Cool Stuff, Inc. Cool Stuff, in stock at CoolStuffInc.com.